Tutorial time's back, Jack. Today, what we're doing, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to properly splice two wires of the same kind. Andy man. The things that you will need to properly splice. Number one, wiring. As long as it is the same kind of wiring, it could be 14 gauge two wire, it could be 14 gauge three wire, 10 gauge, four wire, it could be whatever, as long as it's the same kind for each kind. Number two, this might be existing or it might be new. This is some kind of a junction box of some kind, way, shape, or form, and it needs to have a grounding screw on the inside, and it's always nice to have a nice little cover for it too. Number three, wire clamps. They are there to clamp your wire in place. Like so. Whoop, 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 whoop. Keeps them in place. You need a couple of these. Last thing you need, wire screw caps. These go on top. They sometimes come in variety packs. I'm using the yellow ones today. <laughs> Disclaimer, please turn off the power to the wire that you are splicing before you splice. <laughs> now I'm just gonna put it right here as an example so that we can see everything, it's in the light and things like that. I actually did an episode of electrical stuff uh, for my house just a little bit ago. I'll put it in the description below. It had splicing in that episode. So just open everything up, make sure everything is in good working order, or at least good order at least. You want to make sure it has the green screw. That's the green grounding screw. If you have that, you're in good shape. If you don't have that, you're not as in good shape, but hopefully you have one. So sometimes your junction box might be in the middle of your ceiling, which is fantastic. Or sometimes you might need to mount it somewhere. So just for the sake of argument here, we're gonna mount one here. I apologize, before you start mounting stuff, your junction box might come with hardware. You're only going to need two holes. There are five total on this thing. You only need two open for your wires, so. Covered one, covered two, covered three. You only need two holes that are open. One, two. The box is secure. What you wanna do is you wanna take your wire clamp and you wanna screw it on to your junction box. Now, some junction boxes might just have holes and then you have to screw on like a nut on the other side. The nuts look like this. You might have to screw this on the other side. In this case, we don't, because this bad boy comes with a screw, and then it's just uh, nice and tight. Now, you can always do this before as well, unless you don't feel like dealing with, oh my goodness gracious, come on. What is the hold up? There we go. Next step is to grab your existing wire and pass it through. So my existing wire is gonna pass through, and you wanna leave yourself about, about eight inches this is about eight inches of, uh, of extra wire. And you can pass through your new wire. Again, you wanna be using the same kind of wire here. You don't wanna be using two different kinds of wire. Once you have them in and you know that you have them in the spot that you want, you want to tighten your clamps so that the wires don't move. Granted, I told you to put these on afterwards. You could have put them on before and then tightening it would be a lot easier than how I'm making it right now. You don't want it too tight, like snug. You want snug. There you go, nice and snug. So now you've got your two wires here. Now we're going to the next step. Now I forgot to mention these before. Wire strippers. You want to strip so that you've got a couple inches from your box so that the insulated part is still far from where it might be exposed. This is exposed wire. You don't want to strip it too close to here. So give it a couple inches, and then you can strip the rest. Gives you lots to work with. And when you're stripping, the white, the black, and the grounding wires on the inside, you don't want to hit those. If you do, you've gone too far. And it should just be able to just pull it right off, and voila. You've got your wires. Got your bare copper wire right here. Got your black wire right here. You got your white wire right here. And we're gonna strip, same thing again. Got our two white wires, got our two black wires, and our two grounding wires. We're going to terminate 
on our green screw. Now, where's that screwdriver? Oh, there it is. Where's the other green, or where's the other screwdriver? Now we're just gonna take this. Uh, doesn't matter which one you use, as long as it's terminating. So, I'm gonna do this and we're gonna wrap it around. Uh, like that. I'm gonna wrap it around like that. Okay? And then we're gonna tighten the screw here. Almost there. There we go. Once the wire doesn't move, eh, that's not going anywhere. Perfect. So now you have terminated the grounding to the box. Now you can terminate the other grounding wire eh, right here. All you gotta do is wrap it around a couple of times. All you gotta do is just wrap it around, make it look like this with the curl. And then you just take your wire cutters Cut off the tip, screw the cap on, and voila, you've just terminated the grounding wire, which is one of the most important parts of this whole process. Now, wire cutters, I'm sorry, wire strippers, excuse me, finding the right size is key. I wanna strip it at the, dag nabbit, I wanna pick the 14 when I'm stripping the wire. Grab it, pull it on 14. Once your wires are clean, like so, nice and clean, just wrap them and turn them clockwise. And any little excess that you have on the ends, you can just cut it off. And then bring in your screw caps. They also tighten clockwise. Boom, you splice properly. Now, one final step. Now this might be overkill for some people, but I don't believe in overkill, especially when it comes to electricity, which can kill you. Most deaths that happen with electricity in your home happen because somebody's messing with 120 volt, which is just regular wiring, and they're like, oh, I don't need to shut it off. Always, always, always shut off your power when you're splicing. Oh my goodness, disclaimer, I totally forgot about that. And I apologize. I'll put this at the beginning of the video. Or one, uh, the last step inside the box is to make sure that you wrap the ends. And this is just an extra safety precaution so that if there is any exposed copper, it won't be touched by anybody. And don't use like masking tape. Just go out and get electrical tape. The stuff doesn't cost that much. Don't be stupid, stupid. All right, let's put these wires in the box. It does not matter how you configure them as long as they go inside the box. Last thing we're gonna do is cover this bad boy. Sometimes when you buy the nice covers, they come with a little foam part on the end so that it gives you more of a locked, airtight feel. Good for weatherproof places, like in crawl spaces or attics. Any kind of a, um, uh, a box cover is good if it's in a more accessible location, like in a bedroom or a living room or a kitchen or something like that. Oh wow, I wasn't even touching it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Boom. Now, if you're feeling really cool about yourself, you can label it. So if this is for like a bedroom or a living room or something like that, uh, just put it on there so that way, if you have to mess with it in the future or somebody else has to mess with it in the future, you don't feel like such a weirdo for doing it. Boom. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to keep coming back and learning more stuff, hit that subscribe button. If you guys have any other tutorials that you would like me to do, uh, just put them in the comments down below. And there will be more adventures from the Hamdy Man. So stay tuned, because more tutorials to come.